medicine deconstructed. I figured today, since I am Dr. Jay Rutland, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about vaccines and children receiving vaccines. So there's a lot of media attention about vaccines causing autism. The short answer is they don't. So when you go back and you look, in 1998, Andrew Wakefield, a British physician, had looked at 12 kids who had developed a gastroenteritis, and eight out of those 12 kids also developed behavioral disruption, which looked like autism. And so he started to associate the MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, with autism. Now, what we found out years later after studying this over and over and over again, and all of those studies suggested that this was not true and he had falsified some of his evidence, the Lancet actually retracted this paper. The Lancet is the journal that the paper was actually published. So they retracted this paper and 10 out of the 12 colleagues who published this paper along with them also retracted their original thoughts and statements. What we found out was that Dr. Wakefield had taken money from some local lawyers that were trying to sue the MMR company, saying that the parents said that the vaccine was causing their kids to develop autism. But let's look at the science of a vaccine. Let's understand exactly what it is. So there are live attenuated vaccines, and then there's these subunit vaccines. If you remember a few weeks back when I talked about the immune system, and I talked about the skin barrier, and then I talked about the innate immune system, which, is, which are the white blood cells that fight any infection that comes in contact with the bloodstream, and then the adaptive immune system, which is the immune system that develops specific proteins and antibodies to fight infection. So what a vaccine is, if you have a live attenuated vaccine, it's actually a weakened virus or a weakened bacteria. We inject it into the skin and it gets in the bloodstream. The immune system, white blood cells, recognize this. First, that innate immune system, so the neutrophils and the macrophages. And then they present an antigen, which is a little piece of the virus or a little piece of the bacteria to the adaptive immune systems, the B cells and the T cells. When they see this antigen, they start to make specific antibodies and proteins to attack this bacteria and cells infected with this bacteria or virus. But the immune system isn't quite done. There are memory B cells and memory T cells, the type of immune system cells that we discussed before, and they hold the fort in either the bone marrow or in other lymph nodes remembering what this antigen looks like and what this bacteria or virus looks like so that when they are presented with that bacteria or that virus again, they can fight it that much quicker. Remember, as we discussed, typically speaking, it takes seven to 10 days for your adaptive immune system to make these antibodies and proteins so they can fight the bacteria or the virus appropriately Again, when you're already immunized and your immune system has already seen this bacteria or virus, when you become in contact with this virus or bacteria again, the immune system works that much quicker. That's how a vaccine works. Because again, in the ages of smallpox and even chickenpox, people, children, women, they were dying. So vaccines are extremely beneficial to the health. They're extremely beneficial to people so they don't get as sick so their immune system can understand what things look like and can fight it that much better. Thanks for listening to Medicine Deconstructed. And remember, always be better today than you were yesterday. Thanks for joining.